Peter Thiel might be the most dangerous billionaire investor alive. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. How do you become truly dangerous? You become dangerous by amassing money and power and by pairing these two elements with your personal agenda. Peter Thiel has all three, money, power, and an agenda. He famously turned $1,700 to 5 billion, generating a return of 2.9 million X, easily placing him as one of the MVPs in the world of venture capital, closely next to Mark Andreessen and Kevin John. He's starting to play the game of power by getting more active in politics. In the past, he famously helped Donald Trump rise to power. Now, he's starting to strategically back-selected political candidates that are aligned with his goals. And lastly, he most definitely has an agenda. More on that later. Peter Thiel was born in the second best country of the world, Germany, in the city of Frankfurt am Main, also known as the birthplace of Goethe and Kevin John. Having just been born, Peter was still ambitious and not ready to retire yet. I always thought that Berlin, for example, was, was going to be a great place for innovation. And now I just sort of think it's this, the city people move to in their 20s to retire. I think ambition is just not considered cool in Europe. Already at age one, living in Germany, Peter Thiel did not like being second. And so he moved his family to the then best country in the world, the USA. Imagine you want to design a brilliant investor and power player. What would he or she look like? There's a couple of boxes they would need to tick. You know, I know you're going to get into Stanford in four years. Four years later, I got into Stanford. Then I got into Stanford Law School. To top it off, give them something uncommon that highlights their intelligence, like a great interest in mathematics and being the holder of a life master title in chess. Oh, he does have a play. Peter Thiel had all that and more. After graduating from Stanford Law School in 1992, he quite correctly asserted that this is just the beginning of his career trajectory. Life doesn't end in college. So, Thiel started building up his CV. He clerked for a judge, worked as a securities lawyer, and as a derivatives trader at Bulge Bracket Bank Credit Suisse. Here, he developed one of his beliefs, which serves as a great lesson for all of us trying to construct our own careers. And so you want to always put substance over, over status. What happened next is widely known. This is how Thiel built a solid foundation for any moonshot career moves he might want to attempt in the future. He returned to California and in 1998, he started a company that would later become PayPal. The story of PayPal is a fascinating one in itself, but that's not all. PayPal merged with Elon Musk's online financial services company X.com in 2000, with both alphas, Peter and Elon, clashing multiple times in the period after the merge. Between all of us, we managed to make PayPal work, which is the, what was, what, that was the important thing. I think Elon's super impressive because he's done something outside the IT space. The group of people that led PayPal in these early days are referred to as PayPal Mafia because of their massive business influence. So you might say that Peter made some solid connections back then. However, this was not the only thing he would take from his PayPal adventure. Thiel was about to experience the first major liquidity event of his career. Which is something all of us on this channel are striving for too. Liquidity events. I talk about how to build a foundation for liquidity events in my video The Boring Path to 1 Million Net Worth Before 35. Some weeks ago I came across a startup that supports you on your path to a 7 figure net worth or 10 figures and buying media conglomerates, whatever fits your psychopathic tendencies. Of course, I reached out to the founder of Chronify to learn more about what he's building. And it's basically the app to my YouTube channel's mission. 
For example, we talk about having a 10-year master plan often. Chronify helps you to track just that, your net worth development in the next years, taking into account your participating career, side ventures, one-off liquidity events, and so on. Through the link in the description below, you can sign up for a free trial without any obligations and start plotting your plan for becoming liquid. How did Peter become liquid? The party is basically a massive blur in my mind. I, I, all I remember is just having a bottle of champagne and a cigar, and uh, then I woke up. PayPal went public in February 2002 and was acquired by eBay in October 2002 for 1.5 billion US dollar. Thiel's ownership of PayPal was diluted to single percentage digits at this point. Nevertheless, the acquisition provided him with a financial cushion that would just be enough for his megalomaniacal plans that would come afterwards. 55 million US dollar. Thiel was around six years into his career, so after graduating university, when he started PayPal. And he was around 10 years into his career when he had his first large exit event. Just for you to be able to benchmark yourself against this. Now, imagine you just earned yourself 55 million US dollar. What do you do next? Either you take risky bets and try to maximize your wealth, or you play it safe and go into wealth preservation mode. Most people would say that these are the two options. That's why most people aren't billionaires. Thiel applied a three pillar strategy to both conserve his wealth and maximize the probability for moonshots. Here's how he did it. And the results were mind blowing. Pillar one was that he took 10 million US dollar and started a hedge fund. The fund was called Clarium Capital and pursued a global macro strategy, essentially betting on large scale global events. Pillar one was supposed to preserve and grow Thiel's capital. Pillar two was venture capital. He got active as an angel investor, writing investment tickets on his personal balance sheet, as well as starting multiple VC funds. One of these was the famous Founders Fund, considered to be a tier one VC, with investments such as Airbnb, Spotify, Lyft and Stripe. Pillar two was supposed to grow his net worth more aggressively with an expected return of 15 to 25% per annum, in line with typical VC returns, with some slim moonshot potential of hitting a home run and 100xing Teal's capital. Pillar 3, the last pillar of his strategy, was building his own venture. That meant taking a small amount of capital and starting totally from scratch, but also giving him full control over the company's roadmap and so arguably the highest moonshot potential. This strategy materialized by Thiel founding Palantir, a company that specializes on big data analytics and works with clients such as the US military. Did this three pillar strategy work? Hell yes it did! For his hedge fund Clarium Capital, the 10 million US dollar he put in in 2002 had grown to around 350 million US dollar assets under management, two thirds of which was Thiel's money. Not bad. For the second pillar, Venture Capital, Thiel hit a home run. Ever heard of an investor say he's looking for the next Facebook? Well, Thiel found Facebook and had a major influence on its success. At one point, he owned around 10% of Facebook. When yeah, but I mean, he was that. massively influential on my thinking. In 2012, so around 20 years into his career, Facebook went public and Peter liquidated part of his position, cashing in roughly 1 billion US dollar and putting him into the prestigious 3 comma club. Lastly, and this is where the power of Thiel's strategy becomes apparent, Thiel still has a single digit percentage ownership of Palantir, a company with a market cap of around 30 billion US dollar at this point. This could turn into another billion dollar payday for Thiel if the company keeps growing. With all that capital accumulated, it's time for Thiel to apply his techniques not to making money, but to building power. Estimates place Peter Thiel's net worth somewhere between 2 and 10 billion US dollar. But in terms of wealth, Thiel is just slightly above average when it comes to Silicon Valley titans, let alone Wall Street. Dustin Moskowitz, Larry Ellison, 
or Sergey Brin of Google, which he loves to criticize for the lack in innovation in recent years. You know, Google also has 30, 40, 50 billion in cash. It has no idea how to invest that money in technology effectively. And so it prefers getting 0% interest from Mr. Bernanke. All these people have significantly higher financial firepower. However, at some point, the marginal factor of what you can do with money decreases exponentially. And Peter has certainly reached this point. What do you do if you have everything man can reach in business money-wise? How do you start playing the game of power? Correct. You go into politics. And this is not to say that Thiel wasn't powerful before. Let's start with uh, the, you know, the facts of the case. It involved a sex tape. You know, if, if, you, if you make a sex tape of someone with their permission, you are a pornographer. If you make a sex tape without their permission, we were told now, you are a journalist. In a famous incident in 2007, the gossip blog Gawker made Teal's homosexuality public. He didn't like that at all, but kept his composure. Years later, he seized an opportunity to launch a counterattack. Thiel confirmed last week that he secretly spent about $10 million bankrolling lawsuits against Gawker. In one of them, a jury awarded retired pro wrestler Hulk Hogan $140 million. This dispute began in 2007 when a Gawker website outed the PayPal co-founder as a gay man. Thiel told the New York Times Gawker is a terrible bully. He called the lawsuits one of the, quote, greater philanthropic things that I've done. What was the outcome? We don't believe that the Hulk Hogan verdict will stand. You know, $140 million. In terms of the money, though. Gawker lost, needed to pay compensations in the hundreds of millions, and was forced to close in 2016. Most people would consider this amount of power to be extraordinary. But most people aren't like Teal or the target demographic of our Patreon Discord community. And they are not like the people who hold both hands on the sides of the world and spin it like a top. So politics it is. And also here, Teal is following his very own strategy. Normally, there are multiple common paths into politics. Studying something extremely useless and becoming a politician once you graduate. Or building business success and transitioning into politics later, like Donald Trump or Michael Bloomberg. Thiel chose a third way. Of course. For a start, Thiel is a member of the Republican Party. Although he contributes to both Libertarian and Republican candidates and causes, since 2007, Peter Thiel has been supporting political candidates financially, usually with grants from the tens of thousands up to around a million US dollar. He famously supported Trump in 2016. Billionaire investor and PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel is making his first donation of $1.25 million to his campaign. He last spoke at the Republican National Convention. Every American has a unique identity. I am proud to be gay. I am proud to be a Republican, but most of all, I am proud to be an American. Tonight, I urge all of my fellow Americans to stand up and vote for Donald Trump. But recently, Thiel announced something that hints at much larger ambitions. We've got some news on Meta that we want to bring to you. Uh, changes in the board, Peter Thiel. Uh, is not going to stand for re-election to the board. It was later announced that Thiel will leave in order to support pro-Donald Trump candidates in the 2022 United States elections. Ever since, like a puppet master, Thiel has been picking selected political candidates and building them up strategically and financially. The sum he has donated far exceeds any sums he has been giving out before and places him as one of the top political donors of the US. More than 20 million US dollar for the 2022 elections. If you could choose, would you want to become king or kingmaker? Would you want to be the person at the front, publicly taking and justifying decisions? Or the silent master at the back, plotting the big picture strategy? It is obvious that Thiel is making a concerted push for the latter option. However, one question remains. What topics is he putting on the agenda? Thiel divides the world into bits and atoms. We've lived in a world in which uh, bits were unregulated, 
and atoms were regulated. This is a framework that's incredibly useful to keep in mind. I have used it on various instances and it might even come in handy during case interviews. He fundamentally believes that breakthroughs happen in the world of bits because we live in a world in which bits are unregulated and atoms are regulated. His political philosophy, which is influenced by the French Stanford professor René Girard, emphasizes the role of outsiders and non-conformists. Since his student days, he has purposefully violated the rules of political correctness and gathered young minds of the libertarian right around him in his entourage. This means he is anti-everyone studying. We need to push back on this that this, this idea, the only way to get saved is by getting a diploma from college. Anti-China. But um, if you're only one or two steps ahead, that's not very much. And so if things are copied very quickly, then maybe you don't need to innovate at all. You can um, outsource all the very hard R&D work to, um, to the West. Uh, you have a lot of deadweight economic costs associated with that. And then if you can just steal all the IP. Anti-starting shitty businesses. Um, and so maybe they shouldn't be starting businesses. So my, my view is we should be starting more good businesses and fewer bad ones. Anti-interiority. You know, July of 1969, men reached the moon. And three weeks later, Woodstock began. As opposed to exteriority, which he equates to progress. And anti-being a sheep and not thinking for yourself. We do not trust... Uh, people's ability to, to think through things at all anymore in the 21st century. Girard also made him a big believer in mimetic theory, which says that human beings naturally imitate the desires of other human beings. It's also why this channel works. We are all ambitious 0.1 percenters, looking to emulate some of our biggest business titan inspirations. How does all of this tie back to Peter Thiel being such a dangerous individual? Obviously, he has money and it's growing. Obviously, he has power and it's growing. Obviously, he has an agenda. So what exactly will the future bring for America and the world under Teal's influence? Well, we cannot know yet, but we will sure find out soon. Because a fourth principle of being dangerous is to not share your agenda openly. What are you thinking over the next five years or 10 years for you. I would like our society to get back to the future. Or as Sun Tzu stated more eloquently, let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night. And when you move, fall like a thunderbolt.